So the rain stopped. Uh, I'm just out here trolling. So I'm gonna try to show you how I do this with one person. I'm just gonna get a little bit more speed here so I don't get snagged. So what I do is I, I put the, the rod against the heel on this side and then against my shin on this side and then it sticks out the boat and that uh, get some more speed so I don't get snagged again and that'll lock it in place here okay, like this like that against my shin and then I also feel the fish takes I'll feel it here and then I paddle on this side of the boat so if you're with two people this system still works same thing except the person does it opposite and they paddle on the other side too and then you can run two people the trick is to keep the boat moving right now i'm using the wind a little bit and so it's uh a little bit it, it's touching bottom now but i've got a bottom bouncer on so it should be okay so with two people one on either side of the boat same thing and then you just paddle and you're off trolling i just caught myself some dinner <laughs> Gigantic perch. It's not too bad. It's almost as good as a walleye. I'll take it. I'm just losing light here, but um, gonna make uh, my uh, I'm gonna make quinoa and uh. I've cut up my little perch here and I'm going to put those in um, uh, flour and so egg, egg first then into the flour then I'll fry it and then the quinoa will go in the pot over here so that's what's going to be for dinner.
So the fish, <coughs> fish didn't turn out as I had planned. The uh, I didn't really have any place to mix it and add the flour in, so it's just egg and fish separate. <laughs> so it didn't it didn't quite go as expected. Uh, so I'm just waiting on the quinoa. That's 15 minutes, and then you're supposed to let it stand for five. But we'll see. And. Uh, Sun's setting right now, so I'll be doing the rest of my chores probably in the dark. Anyway, that's my dinner. I probably won't be uh, able to show you the finished product, but <clears throat> I've also got a bunch of uh, fruit down here that I can snack on as well, fruits and vegetables. Huh. Camera's gonna try to, there you go. It actually turned out to be a nice night. So I've still got my quinoa to eat and uh, vegetables and my dessert. It's hard to, it's hard to tell how late in the day it was because I don't have a watch and it was cloudy. And let's see what I usually go by the sun and that gives me a pretty good indication of how much time I have left. But today, because I was fishing and I ran a little late. Anyway, yeah, clear, clear here anyway. We'll see if the forecast is right for tomorrow with 90% chance of rain and 10 to 15 millimeters, which is, would be a lot of rain. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen. The rest of the week is supposed to be pretty good. Um, clear and hot and sunny, which I would prefer at this point. It's not the greatest for fishing, but fishing's not gonna be the greatest anyway, considering I'm not gonna get to where I want to go. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna pack it in for tonight. Ah. Uh, I guess I'll check back in in the morning. Good morning. Day three. Uh, chipmunks were a little extra chipper this morning. But that could just be because I um, had to... Uh -oh. <sighs> dry my underwear. And so I've got this fired while well, they they didn't dry from last night, so I uh, had to do this, you know, bottomless. <laughs> the chipmunks are a little chattery. Maybe they think they're gonna get some extra nuts this morning. Anyway, that's my joke for today. So there they are drying. I'm bottomless, and uh, it's a pretty depressing day weather-wise. It's uh, gray as expected. So hopefully you don't get too much rain today. Um, plan to play it cool today. Um, I'll try fishing again in this little pond. See what I can pull out of it. Um, the, uh, couple, I've got a couple of ideas as to things that I can do for the remainder, uh, the last four days. Um, the one trail I followed in at the, the first day, uh, I believe it may lead to a lake. It's a lake I've been to before. Um, I figured it was junk because they had logged it a while ago. And uh, so I figured that the trail would be pretty drivable but when I was walking it it was actually really rough um, it's too small lake but there's a boat cache on it or it used to be a boat cache this is a long time ago when I was like 15 16 so there's a chance there's a boat there still which means I wouldn't have to bring a boat in so my thinking is uh, not today or tomorrow but the next day or maybe sooner we'll see is to um, walk halfway there 
set up camp and then do a day trip in and uh, fish that little pothole with the boat cache um, and maybe catch some some brook trout is it if that's a lake that people are avoiding and they're not going to because they can't drive to it it, it might have some promising fishing it used to anyway like it, again it's a small lake difficult to fish not very many fish in it but the fish that are there are uh, are, are a good size my other thought for the rest of the trip was to um, just gonna move this make sure I don't get burnt there um, is to walk out and fish the river. There's a river slash creek. Uh, it's next to the road, so the issue with that is uh, camping, and it's pretty rugged too. Uh, fishing near or camping near a creek is pretty difficult when you don't have a spot, and it's pretty much thicket. So, uh, and there's another lake that's right on the road too. I did a five-day solo this spring at this lake uh, but it's on the road so it's nothing special in in the in the lake itself there's not much fishing I did catch a walleye once um, it's supposed to be stocked but uh, I never managed to catch anything so those are my two thoughts for now two options the, the other option of course is just stay here and uh, continue to fish uh, I do have my trail camera out so I have to I have to retrieve that no matter what I do uh, yeah, so I don't want to move today just because it's it's going to rain anyway, so it's giving me an excuse to, to really think over what I want to do for the rest. It'd be easy just to crash here and do nothing, but uh, I'm not the type of person who likes to crash and do nothing. I like the adventure, that's why I come out, and I like to explore, and first and foremost, I want to find a place that's worth fishing again and again, right? So I might have to abandon this neck of the woods this whole neck of the woods um, in favor of something else maybe more remote maybe I gotta fly in maybe that's my thing maybe I have to go far north way far north uh, maybe I gotta get into the center of Algonquin I've always wanted to do that um, so anyway that, those are my thoughts for this morning so let's we'll see how the day unfolds I wanted to address the being alone issue and the, the camping solo um well you know why I started doing it because I wanted to go when I wanted to go and it became more difficult to find people to go with um, so coming into this trip I was excited and motivated um, so I was getting everything ready and, and, and that was cool looking forward to it and anticipating it driving out here so it's a long drive I started to get uh, lonely even just driving by myself on the highway because I knew I was going to be alone once I got there here um, and then once the loneliness sets in you start to be a little bit fearful and not because I'm afraid of anything out here like I'm by myself I'm not afraid of animals or anything but there's something about us that makes us not want to be alone. Um, throughout the world we live in tribes and we lean on each other and I would imagine that that trait that what makes us want to be social at whatever level is driven by the fact that the people who weren't um, happy to be in a tribe and uh, wandered off by themselves didn't do as well the loners the hermits they didn't have a society and culture to lean on so we did need people to go their own way and discover these new places but we also needed them to come back and invite other people to come and join them so maybe my DNA is more adventurous than somebody else's but I still find that I crave being around people and I miss people even though when I'm at home I don't need to see people all the time and I recharge by being alone toiling by myself or adventuring by myself or just being by myself and learning and thinking being an introvert I don't think changes the fact that you like to have your close-knit uh, family members your tribe 
near you, your, your, your spouse, your kids, your, uh, your friends. Maybe just you don't like the big gatherings that tend to drain you. Chipmunks coming to see what I'm talking about. And the rain is starting too. So I think that, I don't think most people, you know, we call, we give people names like Kermit um, because it's not a healthy thing. And it's probably true, it's probably not entirely healthy if somebody doesn't like to be around people at all. It's a little bit weird, but it's only weird because it doesn't fit the norm and it doesn't really fit, you know, from a logistic standpoint, what people would have experienced, you know, 100,000 years ago. But, uh... I'm the type of person who can break ground. I don't m mind being by myself. Um, but at the same time, I'm doing these videos and putting them up for the same reasons that most people look to their culture and society for, and that's, you know, to connect with other people, um, prestige, and uh, to be validated. Um, I'll be the first one to admit that I don't really care what other people think of me. Um, but on some level, everybody does. So if people disapprove of what I'm doing, that's just fine with me. I can handle it. I'm, I've, I've grown to, to, to uh, learn how to address that. Um, but that comes with maturity. And so does, I think, being alone and, and uh, doing things by yourself into your own tune. I think you come to learn who you are and maybe that doesn't fit the perfect mold that society has at the moment, this moment in time. And perhaps I would have been successful 50 years ago where pioneering and adventuring was something that brought prestige and you came back to your tribe with a big animal or a new area that had abundant resources and you could relay that message to the people. And so that was a, a trait that was valuable at that time. But today, not so much. Today, yeah, we, we celebrate the people that break ground, but they're breaking ground in a different way. They're not finding resources off in different er areas of the world or breaking new ground and trail and, and all these sorts of things. They're doing it a little bit differently with business and commerce and inventing and technology. So anyway, those are my ramblings for now. Uh, looks like they're right about the rain. So I'm gonna... Um, pack stuff up here and and uh, find some shelter.